Okay, so we just finished talking about insulin. Now let's talk about glucagon. Glucagon, glucagon is dominant when our body is in the fasted state. Based on that, let's see if you can answer these questions. Do you think you can guess what the stimuli might be for glucagon secretion? And also, what kinds of reactions do you think will be favored when glucagon is dominant? So go ahead and hit pause and come back when you're ready. All right, so here are some of the stimuli for glucagon secre secretion. Really the main one I want you to know about is decreased plasma glucose, right? So when plasma glucose goes down, that's a sign that you have not been fed, that you're in the fasted state, and then you're going to want to stimulate glucagon secretion. Okay, there are others, but I don't really care that you know those. Um, and then these are the kinds of reactions we're going to be favoring when glucagon is dominant. When we're in the fasted state, we're going to want to stimulate catabolism, right? So our blood glucose is low. We're going to want to, to tap into our stores and break down those storage molecules to free up more glucose for our body to use, okay? So we are going to uh, stimulate glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, ketogenesis. I think this is, I'd rather say like beta oxidation, which then leads to keto, ketogenesis. Okay, anyway, um, once again, the way that we favor our catabolic reactions is to favor the activity or to, to activate the enzymes uh, that are going to promote catabolism, right? So for instance, uh, if we look at the formation of glycogen from glucose, we are actually going to want to go in the opposite direction. We're going to want to take glycogen and break that down into glucose in order to free up glucose for our body, okay? And to do that, we are going to upregulate, activate the enzymes that are going to break that glycogen down into glucose. Likewise, we are going to upregulate the other catabolic enzymes, the ones that are going to promote gluconeogenesis, the ones that are going to promote beta oxidation slash ketogenesis. Okay. So that basically is all I have to say about glucagon. This is a summary that summarizes not really the actions of glucagon actually, but the body's response to low plasma glucose, okay? So just walking through it really quickly, if we have a drop in plasma glucose, the alpha cells of the pancreas will be stimulated to, uh, to secrete glucagon. Glucagon then is going to uh, stimulate catabolism in our bodies. So glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, um, beta oxidation, um, in order to free up more glucose in our plasma, okay? Um, at the same time, we are going to inhibit the beta cells of, of the pancreas. That is going to inhibit insulin production which in turn is going to lead to an inhibition of anabolic activities because when our plasma glucose is low, we don't want to be taking that glucose to store that in larger molecules, okay? All right, um, I want to close with this slide which talks about um, diabetes mellitus. Okay, so diabetes or diabetes mellitus is basically um, a, condi a condition that results from impaired insulin production or an impaired insulin response. We have two types of diabetes, okay? Type one uh, diabetes happens when pancreatic beta cells are destroyed. Usually um, that's an autoimmune thing, the immune system destroys the pancreatic beta cells. When you destroy the pancreatic beta cells, you can't make insulin or you can't make as much insulin as you normally would. Um, so that leads to low insulin levels. Um, generally, this is treated with insulin injections or an insulin pump, right? So if you're missing insulin, you just get insulin put into your body uh, on a regular basis to kind of take the place 
of the job of the beta cells, okay? Type two diabetes happens, uh, it's also referred to as insulin resistant diabetes. Um, and it actually is kind of a result of a variety of causes. Uh, what happens in type two diabetes is you have normal or even elevated insulin levels, but your body is not able to respond to the insulin. It is not, um, it somehow can't sense it. There's something wrong with the signal transduction there. Uh, there are a lot of pathways there uh, that we don't really understand. So uh, we don't fully understand uh, the kind of the mechanism by which type two diabetes uh, happens. Um, and because of that, it's more difficult to treat. Um, as you may be aware, type two diabetes used to be called late onset diabetes because it would tend to happen later in life. But now it's becoming more and more common at earlier and earlier ages in the US anyway. I don't know if that's the case elsewhere, um, but this is problematic because we kind of don't really know how to treat it. Um, and also uh, diabetes is a risk factor for a lot of other health conditions. 